So you've done your electrical design, you've decided how you're going to install everything, and you're on site and you're wondering, what's the maximum length of circuit that I can install without risking exceeding the maximum ZS of the circuit? I've been in that situation myself, and there's a calculation for this that I'm going to share with you right now. And this works even if we don't know what the ZE is going to be. So the first thing that we need to know is we need to know what's the maximum ZS for the protective device. And we find this out either from table 41 in the regs book or by obtaining the information from the manufacturer. Then what we need to do is we need to know what the maximum ZE is going to be. So if it's a PME system, it's going to be 0.35. If it's a TNS system, it's going to be 0.8. So those are the two bits of information that you need. And then you can carry out this equation, which I'm going to show you on screen now. So what we do is we take the maximum ZS and we subtract the maximum ZE. And then we divide by the tabulated value for R1 plus R2, which we find in the on-site guide. But the one thing that we need to bear in mind though is that tabulated value for R1 plus R2, we need to divide that by a thousand. So if we look at the example equation below, so maximum circuit length for a radial circuit, it's going to be maximum ZS minus maximum ZE divided by the tabulated value for R1 plus R2, which is divided by a thousand, so you can see that's in brackets there, so that happens first, and then that's multiplied by 1.2. Now, another thing to bear in mind is that there's a slight difference if it's a ring circuit. So you'll notice the example on the bottom, what we've got is we've got a multiplier of four at the beginning of the equation, and now this is to take into account the fact that you've got the loop of the ring circuit. So that equation would be four multiplied by and then in brackets, maximum ZS minus maximum ZE, and that's divided by the tabulated value of R1 plus R2, which is divided by 1,000, and then that's multiplied by 1.2. So by using this formula, we can accurately calculate the maximum circuit length to make sure we don't exceed the maximum ZS, and then of course, the maximum disconnection time. Now you may be wondering, why not use the actual value for the ZE in this equation, which you can do if you know what the ZE is going to be. But the advantage of using the value for the maximum ZE, so 0.35 for a PME system, is that this will help us to ensure that the circuit will remain compliant over its lifetime, bearing in mind that we don't know what's going to happen to the electricity supply network over that time. There might be alterations in the network, which might mean that the ZE increases or decreases or whatever. So there is an advantage in using the values for maximum ZE in this equation. So this equation helps us to make sure that the circuit doesn't exceed the maximum ZS for the protected device. But there's also another thing to bear in mind, and that's the maximum volt drop for the circuit. Now I talk about that in another video on my channel, and I'll put a link at the top of the screen. So please check that out if you haven't seen that before because it's also really important to make sure that we don't exceed the maximum volt drop for the circuit. So I'll put a link at the top of the screen for that. And if you haven't already done so, please click over here to subscribe to my channel.